I'm Danica Patrick, and I'm pretty intense. Most people by now uh, know, know who Colin Kaepernick is and know about the, uh, you know, his protest during the national anthem. Mm -hmm. um, his protest is, is about police brutality and social injustice. Is the mm. best way to put it. And I guess it was so it was August or September. I think August 2016. So we're right right before the election. So it's mm. very tumultuous time. You know, it was Trump versus Hillary Clinton, and like right. this whole you right. got to be on one team or the other, and everyone's like we're already dividing like crazy. Ugh. And yeah, it's 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 frustrating, especially I think as a as a war fighter because you're fighting for everybody over it's there. It's demoralizing to a society. You know? Yeah, the it more is. reasons to divide. Yeah, it is. It's it's really frustrating. And so, um, amidst that, you know, Colin starts sitting on the bench during the anthem, and it's like huge uproar. Uh, it blew up even more than I think he was prepared for and and, and expected it to, and. Uh, I wrote this up an open letter that week uh, to, to the Army Times because I'd, I'd been reached out to by like Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, all the big publications, but I knew if I do something with because them. Because they knew you were in the military and because you were standing next to them? No, I hadn't or even met because him yet. Oh. Just because I'd been in the military and because I oh. played for the Seahawks a year before. Oh, okay. So it was like, oh, this guy served our country and also played football, so he what must be the expert on <laughs> the anthem and what you should do or whatever. You know, but yeah, it was really what you think. And I didn't want to really say because I was like, it, it, first of all, it doesn't matter a ton what I think. Um, but, and also, if I, if I take an opinion or a stance, it's just going to cause more issues. It's going to cause more division. But even if I go on a certain network because of what that network sort of, the agendas they push. Sure, because they all do have their Yeah, their it'll put me in like, a, everyone will assume I believe certain all these light. things. Yeah, and if I'm you're like, on CNN, yeah. you're one way. If you're on Fox, yeah. you're another. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not either of those things. Like I, I, some things I like on this side, some things I like on that side, and that's yeah. just who I am. And so I wrote for the Army Times, wrote it for the Army Times because not that many people read the Army Times, first <laughs> of all, but second of all, it's, it's not political at all. Like mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's for the military, whatever. And they posted it the next day, and a ton of sports journalists started sharing it. So it went like crazy viral. And Colin ended up reaching out. Um, I was about to go on. The first interview I was going to do on TV was for NFL Network because it was also like, all right, it's a sports channel. It's going to be less political. And I knew the people there. I felt more comfortable. And so I'm like in the green room, and, and Colin's publicist called me and said, hey, Colin's at practice right now. They're playing their last preseason game tomorrow. He's starting. Um, it's down in San Diego. Is there any way you'd be willing to go down there and meet with him before the game? He really wants to talk to you. And I was like, sure. So I go down there. I'm finding out as I head down, it's like military appreciation night. Like the Navy SEALs are going to do a flyover and dive, jump into the stadium. And like, it's San Diego. It's a very military town. Yeah, I was like, sure. oh boy, you know, this is going to be big. So I went down, met him in the lobby of the team hotel. Um, and we talked for a couple of hours. And just like you mentioned a second ago, like we had so much more in common than we had different. Yeah. And like we, you know, disagreed on a few things, but I agreed with a lot of what he had to say, like where it's coming from as far as like, yeah, I want to see things improve. I don't want to see, you know, any cops doing that. And I know, right. and he acknowledged too, like most of them are really good people. Right. Uh, who wouldn't stand but, for fairness and justice. Exactly, and exactly. And so it was, uh, it was really just like, that was a conversation. And, uh, and, and, uh, and by the end of it, he was just like, well, do you think there's another thing, something else I could do or another way of demonstrating, you know, because I'm not going to stand during the anthem. I've already vowed to, to not, and I don't want to break that until I feel like things are moving in the right direction and changes are happening. And I was like, I mean, that's a tough question because no matter what you do, you're going to get criticized, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. there's just no, there's no perfect protest or whatever. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. Right. It's messy. You know? I mean, it's yeah. like, the no, no, there's always pain for growth. So, right. you know, the pain is like, this is uncomfortable uh, for people. Right. Exactly. Um, and I said, but I, I would offer you this. I think it's important right now. You're, you're sitting on the bench sort of isolated from your team. I think it would look good if you were at least alongside your teammates, whatever you're doing, because they're, they don't all agree with you. A lot of them do, mm -hmm. but you're a quarterback. You're a leader of the team, um, and I just think you know, being alongside them sort of puts you on an equal f playing field. And, and whether that's just optically or for them mm. to like feel like, 
all right, it's not making it about me. I'm not making it about me. I'm doing this with my, with my guys. And, uh, you know, and they, they may not agree, but I think they would respect you more hmm. if, if you did that. And he said, he agreed to that. And, uh, and then I said, so if you're not gonna stand, like, what are you gonna do? Because I don't think sitting on the field is a good idea. And he was like, no, I don't think so either. <laughs> and uh, I said, what if, you, you know, what if you took a knee instead? I said, I, as far as I know, kneeling has never really been seen as like a disrespectful act in the history of mankind. It's like, people propose look what to their you wives. Did, Nate. Jeez. You know? I know, look what I started. But like, Because pr- I don't prayer, remember the sitting part. Yeah, he sat for two games before that. And it was already national news at that point. Yeah. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a good adjustment, <laughs> honestly. You know, yeah. I thought it was like at least he was willing to listen and, yeah. and, 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 and move in that way. I think that that story definitely got lost. Yeah. And part of that was maybe on Colin for not you know, talking about it, like why he decided to do that instead. But mm-hmm. it is what it is. Um, and it was bizarre because, I mean, that night, you know, the, the, the team invited me to come down on the field and, you know, and stand with them, mm-hmm. stand next to him. I mean, I told him I was going to stand, but I would, you know, if he was willing to do that, I would stand next to him. And, uh, and the, you know, there's boos coming from the crowd during the anthem. And the Af- sure. anthem was being sung by an African-American uh, Navy sailor. Mm. It was just interesting, man. It was, it was crazy. 